Hey, my Tom's here, and today we are cutting up some funky cedar. This cedar, I got this out of Mobile when the power line company, or the power company, excuse me, was clearing lines, and they took this tree down, and I actually cut up two logs, I think, for the individual. I got these couple logs from, and he only wanted a, a tabletop, maybe a mantle and a bench or something like that. But I got a couple of these logs in return. Very happy with that. I love working deals like that. So this is about eight foot long. And on the base here, around 22 inches here. Now, however, it does bell out where all these knots and everything are. Uh, closer to 24 inches. Now, what I've done here is I've just taken the chainsaw and cut off a couple of the larger pieces and knots and everything around it. Uh, because this is going to be kind of a bear uh, to cut on the mill. I think it's gonna be pretty. I mean, the heck that already looks like some curl there <laughs> But uh, I've got a guy who's wanting to make this into a Bench I believe to go with a matching tabletop that I'm cutting for him as well. So This will be interesting. This one's gonna have a whole lot of knots the customer really wanted a whole lot of knots or anything I think this will do the trick Although I am gonna have to shave off quite a bit of this stuff in order to get to what's actually on the inside there uh, you need to check out my buddy's, hopefully, I think he has a page, I'll find out, but it's Zeke Designs. He's down in the Ocean Springs area, and he does a lot of the arts and craft fairs. He does amazing epoxy work, and I'll see if I can post some pictures of some of the work he's done, because it is, like, over the top. Uh, he really got into the epoxy stuff, and in fact, he gets a lot of his wood from me, and I believe he's actually doing this full-time now. I mean, he's been making tables he's an artist he he uh, paints a whole lot of beautiful pictures really cool stuff but he does a lot of the peter anderson festival down in pascagoula and some other arts and crafts type fairs or anything but really really neat guy really neat uh, design that he does and very artistic at that so again let's go ahead and get this thing i'm going to run the metal detector on here because i believe this was near a fence line so we're going to go ahead and run a metal detector on here and see if we found anything. So we've loaded the funky cedar log onto here, and as you can see, it does bell out quite large on this side. I will be using a tow board a decent amount on this side. And all I'm gonna do is try to get that hump taken off. Now I've got a buddy who makes, he calls them wood spirits out of this stuff, and it's absolutely beautiful. He'll, he'll hand carve faces and all sorts of stuff into it. So it looks really great. So what we're gonna do, We'll go and use the tow boards, lift this up, get it leveled out and everything, make a couple cuts, and then uh, we'll get our reference cut done, and then we'll flip the log over and then start doing that. So I'm going to throw in a time lapse just because this might take a few iterations to get everything leveled out, and, and I don't want the video to go too terribly long. And hopefully, I just put some more stuff onto my fire right there, hopefully... I get that fire going because I really need that's all the pine that I cut yesterday that's all the off cuts and everything I just did a large order of a whole lot of six by sixes and stuff like that I didn't record any of that because that's just kind of boring <laughs> I did hit nails that's always fun so uh <laughs> all right let's get back to this one don't want a time lapse get this log leveled out reference cut made and uh, we'll flip it over then we'll do some real live cutting I, I did run the metal detector on this and, and found nothing but you know that's not to say there's not something in there here we go folks I cracked myself up so <laughs> it's been uh, about five hours since I last started this uh, I had a couple customers come over did some other stuff had lunch fell asleep and uh, now I'm back to it as you can see I just went over here and redid my fire pile it was quite a bit larger earlier but I just threw everything back to the center so yeah things just get in the way sometimes but uh, I had a really good time meeting with some uh, uh, some friends and some customers and subscribers of the channel always a good time to you know spend some time and talk to people and, you know, talk about wood. It's always fun. So we've made the cuts. We've got both sides kind of leveled out the way I wanted to be leveled out. And now we're going to go back through and we'll turn it up on end. I'm not sure which side. I'll probably put this side right here up 
um, because it does have some weird knots and stuff. I use a tow board a little bit and we'll uh, get this kind of squared up a little bit and then we'll just start slabbing it up. I'm thinking two inches. I think we'll stick with two inch uh, slabs to make this pretty nice, but we've got it in a pretty good form right now, but it does have a whole lot of protrusions off it. The protrusions off it are making it very difficult. And as you see on the back side here, I have a piece of poplar that I'm using to kind of hold it up against there because it bells out so much down here. I, I really can't get a good uh, push on it with the log dog without pushing the front end beyond the tracks of where the sawmill is. So you, you gotta be creative. And in my situation, I've got this board going across. I still have my log stops up a decent amount. But I mean, you can see right there in the distance, some of those pieces that are coming off of this are just gorgeous. And they, the guy who's actually getting this loves stuff like that. I mean, Zeke Design, uh, I'll put a, uh, a link into his stuff and, and I'll show some pictures of his finished work here at the end, but awesome dude amazing epoxy work that he does so uh, pretty exciting that you know he takes you know quote unquote scrap pieces off of the mill here and makes some very genuine works of art that are worth you know a lot to the customer who uh, who eventually ends up buying them but they are just gorgeous and there's a lot of work energy to go into it so we'll throw another little time lapse get this thing moving along i've got to check uh, some bolts here make sure everything's good and tight and uh, we'll continue on from there. We now have the cedar into a very usable cant, if you will. The, the cutting wasn't that bad. I think I'm, the fear of nails is gone. I think I've gone through this. This is very gorgeous. And in, in fact, the pieces that are coming off it thus far are pretty nice. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and slab this down two inch increments all the way down. I had to take this bell section off the bottom, but I don't think I lost a lot out of this. I think we still have most of the wood there and what the customer's looking for. On the other side, I did see some curl, which you don't see too often in cedar. So I'm really excited to see if there's anything else further into this log that'll have some like really cool figure and stuff like that. So, let me set the camera up over here. I just made it taller. Uh, let me figure out the angle. And I'll cut these slabs kind of real time. Whoop, that's a horrible angle. <laughs> My bad. I had the, uh, the bottom part of the tripod open and it just fell straight down. Okay, so that looks like it's a pretty good angle. Let's see how she'll cut now.
don't have anything to hold on to it on this side. So we have to put a, uh, a piece of wood. But you would think having a saw I should have plenty of pieces of wood to be sitting around. Blade on there, you just power through things. Let me see if I have. Yeah, everything's in frame. I'll get on the other side. George County. So, yeah, this was pretty nice. I was worried about doting, doting, doting. When it gets soft on the inside, but the dogs, they don't like that or trains, they will howl at everything. Uh, but this is a very pretty piece. The goal was for around six foot, and I'm six foot four, so obviously that's taller than me. Next slab. Again, another beautiful piece. Really no soft spots to speak of. Very happy about that. And these are getting pretty heavy. Well, I'll give the customer a couple of things to actually look at and decide between. This is beautiful. Cedar is always a favorite though. I mean, it's the only thing, the only thing is when you're cutting it, um, if you cut a lot of it, 
The sawdust can be a bit annoying. It's very fine. It gets everywhere. But, uh, it's not that bad. Yeah, this is beautiful. Nice straight grain. This right here was just outside the pit area. So you essentially got your quarter saw in section. And you actually get a little bit of medullary rays and cedar. I like that. A little bit of flecking and some of these straighter grains. Oh man, I didn't even see this down here. <laughs> I'll try not to hit the ceiling. Nice, beautiful feather section right here. That's a big old piece right there, I tell you what. Last but not least, this is the one that had some. Will look to be curled to, but I can't really. I think there's a little bit of curl here, it's just hard to see. So, I'm happy with these turned out. I think I've given the customer about five slabs to choose between. I think he's gonna like them. So, but I always like to give the customer options that way. They don't feel like they're, you know, holding to just one type of uh, wood, or one board. So if someone gives me an idea like what size they're looking for, I'll go ahead and cut a couple things in that size, and then when they get here, they can choose from them. Because the guy who was actually doing this, he is an artist, and he will look at the actual pieces and, you know, think in his mind about which one will work out best. You know, I actually like this one, like, right here. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not as robust as the other one, not as large, but it, you know, it would be a pretty cool one if someone wanted to fill in, you know, make a box around it and fill in an epoxy. But, yeah, I'm happy with the uh, way everything turned out. Another beautiful day out here. Absolutely gorgeous. And, uh... <laughs> Could not be happier folks to be down here. I know I have some subscribers especially uh, Crazy Canuck up in Saskatchewan He uh, he sent me a picture just last week and it looks mighty frigid and cold and frozen so <laughs> I do not envy him at the least but yeah, we'll see so hope you enjoyed this episode. There's a lot of things that were going on uh, I had uh, a few distractions throughout the day, but they were good distractions Get to meet some uh, subscribers and some customers. And it's always fun to talk wood. So, yeah. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do. Uh, the channel is growing every day. I do appreciate that. And there's a lot of things coming on. We've got my building. My dad's coming in town next week. So with the building, I think I'm going to have him put down the flooring while I'm at work next week. And then we're going to work on my back porch, which I haven't really shown much on the back porch. The back porch, we're making a sunroom. Uh, which I've cut all the wood for that, of, of course. But uh, on the outside of that, we're going to do some board and batten cedar. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll finish the actual structure and I'll show on the video the board and batten that we put on the outside. Because that, that's, you know, there's nothing fancy about what I'm doing. It's, it's a stick frame. I mean, I am using some pine one by instead of sheathing because sheathing is just too expensive right now. Plus, the one by pine that I'm doing is probably stronger because it's true one inch. Um, We've got the, the sawmill build. I've, I've really got to get into gear on that. I keep on saying this weekend, this weekend, I haven't done that. And then uh, searching for sawmills. <laughs> I've got another video I got to do on that too. Um, we had a, a few weeks of bad weather, aka rain and storms and stuff like that. But we've got some beautiful days ahead of us. So we'll see if we can knock out some searching for sawmill videos. Uh, I actually, I'm going to record a couple so I can release those throughout the, uh, the upcoming months and everything and go from there. Other than that, I, I'm really looking forward to doing a show. Uh, I've talked about this with Timber King, and I've got to get the dates worked out with my schedule and everything too, but we're thinking about maybe mid to end May or beginning of June time frame, and that'll be here in Loosedown, Mississippi, either at my place or Mr. Robert's place. We haven't decided yet. He has a little more area, and right now with all the jobs I've been cutting, my wood lot is an absolute disaster. But we'll get with uh, Mr. Robert and we'll make a, an informed decision. But we do intend to have some 
craft crafters there and selling some pottery, some woodworking type of stuff, spoons, of course, from Mr. Robert. And we'll see. We might have uh, a couple other things, some epoxy type tables and stuff like that, so people can see that. So I will put more details out as more are known to me, and I, I can make some decisions once I have some dates or anything. But uh, we're looking forward to getting some people out here, seeing some sawmills. We are looking to have a number of sawmills. I'm not kidding y'all. We're looking at having my diesel 2000, a 2520, a 1600, a gas 2000 maybe, and then I've got my Lucas mill here. We've got the 1220. So we will have almost the entire fleet of Timber King sawmills, with the exception of what I used to own, a 1400 and a 2220. But if you've seen a 2520, you've seen the biggest. If you've seen a 1220, you've seen the smallest. If you've seen a 16 and 2000, you're in between. So that's that's pretty much all the, uh, the sawmills that they have in the lineup, without, with the exception of not having the, what was it, the 6000, the, the giant slabber mill. But uh, I will have my Lucas here, so if anyone wants to see that in action, it'd be pretty cool too. So, again, please like, subscribe. We'll see you around. Have fun. Thanks.